Welcome to the channel and welcome to this match play game between Dark Angels and Death Guard. Hi guys, it's Winters. I'm here with Dark Angels. Chris, say hi Chris. Hi Chris. And uh, so we've had many fights, me and you. Not enough, but we've had a few. Yeah. <laughs> we've yeah. had quite a few fights, so we didn't really know what to do this time around. I mean, for the, for example, we've done the Pride Before Dawn series on TV, and a chunk of different fights. Mm -hmm. And the last time uh, we fought, it was competitive. You brought competitive Dark Angels. Well, as competitive as Dark Angels can be. They do struggle a little bit. They have the Azrael thing with all the yeah. Hellblasters around. Too many together. Hellblasters. Four up in... How many did you bring? 20. 20 Hellblasters with the Azrael bubble, with the... With Predators. Four up in Vulnerable Save with the Tribe Predators, yeah. And then it's like 12 last cannons doing, doing nothing, doing nothing, doing nothing. Well, you said competitive, so I brought Mortarian. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that one was over on Deploitzo.tv as well. Yeah. Spoiler um, alert, he died. <laughs> Mortarian always dies. Yeah, yeah. It's just how many people does he take out before he, he kills everything. I think so, he managed none, didn't he? I can't remember. <laughs> I do remember who won, which we won't spoil for you yeah. in case you haven't seen it. Yeah. So um, this time round, we're like, well, what are we going to do this time round? Mm. Yeah. We were thinking 2,000 points, should we go like ultra competitive? Should we, you know, try and write the cheesiest, nastiest thing we can do? Um, or do you want to go bigger? Do we want to go smaller? And I've got 20 Terminators, Death uh, Guard Terminators that I've never failed before. And I hadn't failed with my knight. And I said to you, I've got 20 Terminators and a knight. I said, I've got 20 Terminators and a knight. So we said, let's start there. Yeah. <laughs> and build a list around that. So that's what we're bringing. Something mm. slightly different. Yeah. Um, many Terminators, a many knight each. Terminators. And we're going to smash. So let's go and have a look at the armies. Right, this is 2,500 points worth of uh, Death Guard with a Chaos Knight. Now, Chaos Knights, if you bring them in a single detachment, if you bring any Knights, you have to pick whether they're part of an Iconoclast or an Infernal Household Ambition. My Knight, which has been beautifully painted up by Den of Imagination Painting Studios, link below all. Oh, also those guns that you can see, because I know a lot of people are thinking, where can I get Rapid Fire Battle Cannons or Avengers? They're also available from Den of Imagination in their store. If you go there and then click on their store, you can get extra guns and things. So thank you to Den for painting it up. Anyway, my Knight is Infernal Household Knight, which is the demonic one, the one where you roll on a table and you can get a buff to it. And I've decided even before the game begins, I'm always going to roll on the table. I just roll um, and see what the random warp tells me it can do. Um, but you don't get to pick relics and things like that with Chaos Knights unless you make them a character and you can't make them a character if you've only got a super heavy detachment and this is a super heavy detachment. So what you do is spend a CP on Corrupted Heirlooms. That makes this thing a character and gives it a relic. And I'm going to give it the relic, the Blasphemous Engine. So essentially this knight is not disgustingly resilient, unlike the rest of my army. But Blasphemous Engine means you double its damage characteristics to find out what table it's on, whether it gets bracketed or not. Essentially when knights get to less than half wounds, their weapon skill and ballistic skill goes down. But um, you're still losing the wounds, but you double the number of wounds that they have when determining how much it shoots or punches or fights. And uh, that seems narrative to me. And that seems like it's a bit more disgustingly resonant. That's what I'm bringing it with. It's got triple stubbers and a rapid fire battle cannon and the Avenger cannon. And I didn't know whether to give it the dual cannons or the dual rapid fire. I didn't know what Chris was bringing apart from a 9 and 20 Terminators. So I went with one of the beach to see... <laughs> Because <laughs> I figured one might do something against armor and the other one might do something against infantry. That was my thinking behind the knights. Now, Death Guard. Death Guard, everything in the army has got disgustingly risen, apart from the rhinos, so a five up ignore wounds, and they have hate hatred assault and the shock assault thing now. They've hate got all assault. they've got all the buffs. Basically, Space Marines and Heretic Astartes have plus one attack when they charge or are charged. And they can rapid fire at full range if they stood still. But Death Guard can always rapid fire at 18 inch range anyway. Inexorable Advance, I think it's called. And this is a battalion. I've got eight command points. Spent one on making uh, that knight a relic. Or making it a character and giving it a relic. And then I have a Demon Prince with wings. With a pair of Malefic Talons. 
and I've given this one Miasma uh, Pestilence and the Malignant Playcaster's got Miasma Pestilence and Putrescent Vitality and then we have some Poxwalkers 10 and 17 because of points and then two units of Plague Marines and there are two Blight Launchers in each Power Fists on the Champions and that's it on the Champions and two heavy bloat drones floating around all over the place. Oh, my Demon Prince with the Suppurating Plate and Arch Contaminator is my Warlord. So Suppurating Plate to up save makes it a bit more resilient. Arch Contaminator means Plague Weapons. All Plague Weapons reroll once to wound. But any Plague Weapons within 7 inches of this guy reroll all wounds. So that will come in handy because the idea with him is he floats around with the heavy, two heavy bloat. Two fetid bloat drones with heavy blight launchers, because <laughs> they're plague weapons. And that's my DACA, because you'll notice there isn't any um, plague burst crawlers in this list. There's not a lot of anti-tank. What I'm relying on on my anti-tank is all the plague weapons and the 20 blight lord terminators. And I hummed and ahed about whether to split it up into four units of five. But then I thought, nah. Let's leave them as two units of 10, which means leadership could be a thing if Chris kills a chunk of them, particularly as I've only got seven command points left. But two units of 10 is really cool and really mean. And if I spend a point on veterans of the long war, it makes them a bit more effective. And there are two flails, two blight launchers in each of these squads. And there's the champions both have combi melters. There's a couple of combi plasma spattered in there. Basically, what you see they're loaded out with is what you've get, got bubotic axes, bale swords, a whole smorgasbord of different weapons in there. But they're relatively shooty. They're relatively killy. Unlike Chris's Terminators, they are toughness five and have a four up invulnerable save and disgustingly resilient. And they didn't get any points drops at all in the new chapter approved, I think. There might have been a point drop here or there, but they're still pretty expensive. And the reason why they're pretty expensive is because they're very good. So, lots of Terminators to try and kill some tanks. Looking over my shoulder, fortunately for me, Chris didn't bring very many tanks. Pox Walkers for grabbing objectives. And of course, Plague Marines. You have to bring Plague Marines. I like the humble Plague Marine. I think they, they work well as a standard troops choice with a five up toughness and disgustingly resilient and with uh, hateful assault and all those sort of jazz that the upgrades that they've got at the moment um they are surprisingly good bringing 30 or 40 of them along to a fight is is a way to go particularly in a unit of five you can give each unit of five two specialist weapons so um looking forward to seeing how this goes the first time bringing my beautifully painted knight along to uh a battle report so New model syndrome, this might not last long, but hopefully with Rotate Iron Shields and that relic I've given it, that uh, artifact of tyranny, hopefully it might last a bit longer than, than it normally does for new models. So anyway, this is the bad guys. Let's go look at the good guys. Right, this is 2,500 points worth of Dark Angels with a Dominus in it, and there's your 20 Terminators. I want to say that there's one knight in this list, but there's many knights. It's about 20 knights. In this place. list, because there's Deathwing knights and Black, Black knights, knights and, and Imperial knights. Yeah, and, and so list-wise you've brought a what and a what and a what? I brought a Vanguard, a Spearhead, and a Outrider. So three command points for that, three for being Battleforged. Yep. Uh, you've only got six, and you said you're going to spend one straight away. Yeah, I mean, I'm taking an Imperial Knight Valiant, so the correct life choice is to run him as a um, uh, an Imperial one rather than a Mechanicus one yeah. to give him the Relic Flamer. Yeah. So he has now got the Bernie Burn Cannon of Love. The Bernie Burn Cannon of Love. Had to check there. The Traitor's Pyre. Basically, your, your Conflagration Cannon, which is 3d6 auto hits, two wounding... Strength 7 now rerolls all wounds. Yeah. Now, the thing about this Dominus is um, it's 18-inch range on that gun. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the guns are quite short range. The Thundercoil Harpoon is 12. The Melters are 12. Um, the cannons on top of 48. The cannons on top of 48. And you've got two of the um, missiles on top, which ignore and vulnerable saves. Yeah, the character-hugging ones. Yeah, yeah the character. Uh, yeah. Well, you have to spend a CCP to shoot at characters with mm -hmm. them, I think. And mm -hmm. as you've only got five left. 
Um, so long range on top, short range below, but it does move 10, so its threat radius is quite far, and it's got four more wounds than a standard knight, so 28 wounds. It does cost, I think, 3 CP to rotate, or 2 CP to rotate iron shields mm. on this, rather than the normal 1 I CP. I not with any of that. But you're making it hawk shroud. Yes. So it doubles the wounds characteristics to find out what table it is on. Mm -hmm. So I had to spend a CP for that, but you don't have to. You yeah, just so spend make it on the relic track. instead. Yeah, spend it on the relic. Which makes, uh, to buy the relic, you have to spend the CP to turn it into a character, then get the relic. So this is a character too. It's interesting that both of our knights are characters because it does mean they can heroically intervene mm. if there's a fight going on within three inches of them. So you've bought... A, altogether different kind of knights. I do fight with one of these. I've got one of these in my army. Mm. And it's like walking into a blender. If you get within that 20-inch threat range, yeah, yeah, these yeah. things absolutely murder stuff. Like I've murdered Gulliman on Overwatch before with mm. one of these. I mean, when you told me that, I said that is the right life choice in terms of knights to buy. Yeah. So this is his second outing, so we'll see what happens. So semi-new model syndrome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a semi-detached house. Okay. Um, right. You bought some Raven Wing? Yeah, um, very nicely painted Raven Wing. Um, Talon Master, some beautifully painted Raven Wing. What are these called? These are Black Knights. These are Black Knights. These are Plasma Guys. So the idea is here that I can buff them up to damage two or da even damage three if I need. One's actually got a grenade launcher. Yeah, well, you, you don't see them, right? So chuck yeah. one in. Why not? Yeah. Um, it's the wrong thing to do, but hey. Talon Master has got reroll ones to wound. And ignores cover. And ignores cover, so that's quite nasty. Or oh, we should mention, at the time of filming, you don't get the Assault, Devastator and Tactical Doctrine. No. Also, the other thing about Dark Angels, which is really sucky for Deathwing and Ravenwing lists, is your chapter trait is you can only lose one to morale, but yeah. also you re-roll hit rolls of one when you stand still. Yeah. And the Deathwing and Ravenwing no, really stands. don't want to stand still. Yeah, the other thing is the Deathwing keyword doesn't yeah. actually do anything. Oh, so it's, <laughs> it's not actually in the book. So, okay. you know, you can, you can pay CP to make Dreadnought to Deathwing. Right. It doesn't and then do that anything. doesn't actually do anything. So this one's got the Grav Flux Bombard and the Storm Cannon Array. Yeah, and twin heavy flames in the chest. because uh, He's absolutely brutal as well. Yeah, I mean, he's my anti-knight backup. And also, I knew there were going to be Pox Walkers. And yeah. That damage two. Yeah, damage two is the key for getting this rid of disgustingly resilient. If yeah. anyone's struggling against uh, disgustingly resilient, you want as many damage two weapons as you can. That's so, like overcooked plasma, uh, the traitor's pyre, storm cannon on here. Mm. In fact, the nicest thing in your list, the gentlest thing in your list, is a whirlwind. Yeah. However, um, with the because I include a land speeder, I can use data link telemetry. Right. So if I get anything within twelve inches of the land speeder, yeah, the whirlwind hits automatically. 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 So I'm taking the 2d6, strength 6, AP 0. Nice. So, okay. I mean, I need to take a heavy support choice to include a relic unit. Yeah. So, that's my heavy support choice. Right. And at 80 points. They are cheap. In, they're Warwind going in every cheap. list I write. I love yeah. my Whirlwind. Thunderfire cannons are better. I can't take them. I know. Dark Angels don't get them. Yeah. Crimes. Um, Deathwing. Two units of five normal Deathwing. No shields, because one of the things that Dark Angels can do is you can mix and match assault terminators with normal terminators, yeah, and you haven't done that. No, I have not. Everyone brings a storm shield and a thunder hammer, at least one. Why have you got no storm shield thunder hammers, Chris? Yes. You... Thunder hammers are 16 points each now. Right. So a terminator is 23 points. Right. So I'm almost doubling the price of my Terminator it's just by taking a Thunder Hammer Storm Shield. Yeah. And to be honest, I was expecting mortal wounds here, there and everywhere. These guys got a deep strike in and they're there to deal with chaff and they're going to charge some marines. So you're using Terminators to deal with chaff? Yeah, yeah. yeah I like I'm, it. I've Absolute got, overkill. Yeah, I've got, I've got no troops. So these guys are technically my troops choice. Okay. Um, but you have many, many Storm Shields in this squad of Deathwing Knights. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to take Storm Shields in a Deathwing list, take yeah. Deathwing Knights because yeah. it's just a cheaper way of doing it. Their, their maces are free. Are they? Yeah, so they're nice. like Thunder Hammers, except you don't pay 16 points for them. And there's no minus one to hit. Yeah. And they're just Deathwing Knights, right? Yeah. So, so do they Deathwing Knights have two attacks? Um, well, three with Shock Assault. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So this unit charging forward is plus 30 attacks because of well, the dude with the mace of Absolution. And then the Ancient I've got at the front will... Uh, allow who's the ancient oh the ancient's going to be this guy here with the feathers on his head right um he will add one attack to anything within six inches does okay so that'd be four attacks per death in night nasty um shoot the crap out of them then that's what and i said belial um is not my warlord but he's right. coming along um right. so any death unit within six inches re-rolls all hits really yep 
um, which is cool. So extra attacks, re-rolling all hits. Yeah. You've actually thought about it. There's a bit of... You're stacking them up. I know, I've rubbed those two brain cells together really <laughs> hard for this Caused one. Caused a bit of friction. My warlord will be the librarian, however. Right, okay. So he's going to take the warlord trait, Master of Maneuver. What does that do? So he and anything within six inches can re-roll charges. So we've got re-roll charges... We've got extra attacks, and we've got re-roll everything to hit. Yeah. From Does that stack to just Deathwing? Does that go to Ravenwing well, as well? Well, it's re-roll everything for Deathwing, re-roll ones for everything else. Oh, okay. So it's, it'd be nice for any plasma situations I may find myself in. Okay. However... So with the deep strike here, you've got potential re-roll charging. Sorry, yeah, go on, you say. However, <laughs> for psychic powers, I will take um, Righteous Repugnance. Right. So that will mean that the Deathwing Knights will be re-rolling hits and wounds in melee. And with re-rolling charges, they get stuff done now. Many re-rolls. Four attacks each. It's nice. like a squad of ten gene sealers. Right? Okay. And then his other psychic power is the one that's minus one to hit. Yeah, so just cast it on the night every turn. Yeah, so it's like Miasma of Pestilence. You've got Miasma of Pestilence. It's like you're falling to chaos. Mm, but I only cast it on one... I cast it on an enemy unit. I'm not sure you can cast it on the knights. I can't cast my stuff on knights. No, no, I cast it on an enemy unit. You cast it on an enemy unit? Yeah. So you can cast it on my knight? Yeah, and then he's just minus one to hit everything. Oh. So it's not like you're making your stuff... My, no, I'm disgust. making your stuff rubbish. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm slightly less good. Yeah. I have to say that uh, when I put my list down originally last night, I thought, yeah, I've got 20 Terminators and a knight. I was in my happy place. Now I'm looking at your thing. <laughs> <laughs> with the Dominus, with the Leviathan Dreadnought, with 10 Storm Shield dudes over here and... Uh, you didn't even bring a medallion. You just brought lots and lots of shooty stuff it's and punchy stuff. It's, it's a new thing I'm trying because I I don't get the doctrines. And for me, like Dark Angel's troops are good. Yeah. But Space Marines are expensive as an army. Yeah. So I'm writing lists without troops in it at the moment. Yeah. And I'm writing some really cool things. Well, it's narrative as hell. We've got a Deathwing strike coming in and here, and how often do you get to see 20 Deathwing Terminators on the table? If you subscribe to Deployment Zone, you can see them running the whole campaign. Yeah, you can, actually. <laughs> <laughs> the pride before dawn. Thank you. Thanks for that. That's right. So we get to see 20 Deathwing Knights on the table because on their own, they're not, they tend not to be very good, but backed up by a knight and a leviathan yeah. and some dacker zipping around all over the place... This could be a very punishing list. Could. Could be. <laughs> right, let's go on to deployment. Right, we're back to the battle grid. And what we really want to do in this game is smash each other to pieces. Because um, that's what we do, right? Death Guard hate the Imperium. Yep, they do. And I, I'm not really keen on you either. You're not too keen. No, never been a fan. <laughs> never been a fan. Keep your shoes on. But um, we pray to the right God. You just play to a corpse carrying God on a throne who's sitting there who's probably dead. I think he's I dead. I can smell that as well. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> so Retrieval is the very first game in the Warhammer 40k 8th edition rulebook. It's a very simple game to play. There are three objectives on the table. Of course, we made it four objectives on the table. There is the statue holding the gateway to this ruined temple district in the background. And then there's the roadway going down into the temple back district in the background and then we put two out here in the wilds and it is a very simple game all you've got to do is smash each other to bits and then pull back and score objectives at the end of the game simples um there's first blood not first strike slay the warlord line breaker so like the old school eternal war missions we'll both deploy we'll kill each other and then try and get these three point objectives at the end of the game it gives us something to fight for rather than just smash each other to bits and obviously you've got the wasteland out here with some significant large line of sight blocking terrain apparently they're important in game support i've heard that line of sight blocking terrain is very important and then we've got some large line of sight blocking terrain down here in the temple district i like to think that this planet was destroyed many eons ago or a few years ago and the trees have started to grow through and now it's all in rust and ruin. This is a place fit for Grandfather Nurgle. So the end of all things here have come here to consecrate this ground and make it uh, ripe for um, the blessing of Grandfather Nurgle and the Dark Angels have said enough of that now. We want to stop that sort of thing. No more plague planets. <laughs> no more plague planets. They are here to murder death kill. Um, so that's about it. This battle map is from HotDiceMiniatures.com. Uh, they're a Canadian land company. Everything else is either made by me or GW Original. Right, deployment. We talked about deployment before. Let's really get on to deployment now.
Right, here we are after deployment. We roll for Vanguard Strike Deployment. That's the one where you do a triangle at this end and a triangle at the other end. And I picked this end because it makes narrative sense, essentially. I'm moving forward into the Temple District, into the ruins, in the distance, which meant that uh, Dark Angels Chris got to start dropping some stuff down first. And the way it works in the classic games is you drop, I drop, you drop, I drop. And he who drops first gets to choose whether they go first. And because I was able to put Plague Marines in Rhinos and the Malignant Playcaster down here, I'm choosing whether I want to go first or not. Now, actually going first in Eternal War missions is not necessarily the best thing. Because mm. apart from First Blood, Slay the Wall and Linebreaker, we score these three-point objectives at the end of the game. If I went second, or first, sorry, and I'm on here in turn five then that gives Chris a chance to blow me off that objective and take it for himself, or at least deny me getting that objective, or that objective, or that objective. So going second is not necessarily strongest. I need to think about that in a second, whether I'm going first, because I'm actually conflicted. Because also, there's two objectives deep down in your deployment zone way over there. Yes, I'm close to the two up here in the wilds, though. That's the other thing about it. One of us could get line breaker, one of us could get Slay the Warlord, and then we're both on one objective each, and it turns into a draw. So what I decided to do when I started dropping stuff is I started putting on this side first to try and bait Chris over this way, and then ended up putting the majority of my force down this way because we've both got a lot in Deep Strike. You've put all your Terminators in the teleport. It did take some thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm already messing with your head because you yeah. are putting them down, picking them up, putting them down, picking them up. I don't know what to do. I thought that's how you play the game. You yeah. Should. No, no, no. Not, I, no, I thought maybe um, you could spend a command point on thinking. Yeah, I just roll ones. You yeah. just roll ones, so if you spend that command point on thinking and roll a one, then it doesn't help you anyway. Just so, end up punching yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so I've deployed strongly this way, as close up to the 12 inch away from the centre line as I can. And one of the reasons for doing that is because of all the deep striking that could potentially, if I was spread out, then you could jump with 20 Terminators on one location and smash that. So I needed to castle up a bit. So that's what I've done. And I also put them over there because that's where you put your Leviathan and your Talon Master because the range of the guns on both of these units is quite short. So you needed to be close in order for them to do some damage in turn one. So if I go first, I want to kill them first. There's the, uh, it's not a Tyrant, that's the Chaos one. It's a Valiant. Valiant. And then, why are the Raven Wing all the way back here? They're a counter punch unit. If you drive, you know, three hundred odd points of bikes straight at your en enemy, you yeah. lose three hundred points of bikes. Tend to, um, but so you want an objective based game. So we we wait, we wait, wait and see what stuff comes in, and then pounce. Yeah, we pounce. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense to me. Yeah. So they're staying back there. Um, maybe they were prowling in the ruins in the backfield before the game began. There. But yeah, there's actually not a lot of stuff down on this. It's quite open and quite expansive yet. Both of the knights, both of our warlords are calling in for reserves. You from the battle barge and me from my battle barge. Mm. So uh, I need to think about first turn in one minute. Right, that wasn't easy. A bit of thinking and a bit of measuring later, I'd like to go first. The reason why I was not thinking about going first is because I've already, I think I've deployed pretty strongly considering all the deep striking and moving myself around and splitting up my forces might not be the best thing, but uh, that Leviathan's worrying me. So I want to try and kill it or at least bracket it in first turn. I think that's what I need to do. I can't shoot the Talon Master. He's a character. I need to kill the Leviathan first. I think that's a plan. And also, I'm out of threat range of the Valiant, except for the Carapace guns on top. So I'm going to go first, unless you'd like to loot the initiative, sir. I don't loot. I um, <laughs> tactically acquire. Tactically acquire the initiative. No, it's going to be Death Guard, turn one. Right, start the movement phase. Take a wound on the Infernal Knight, the Demonic Knight, and roll a D3. That's a five, and five is demonic power. Select one range weapon. This model is equipped with an add one to that strength and damage characteristics. The Leviathan's toughness eight. So I'm gonna put that on the gun, but it does mean I'm down to uh, the gun, <laughs> many guns. Mm. Put it on the rapid fire battle cannon because that's strength nine now. Yay. Yay, and, uh, but it does mean I'm down to 23 wounds. Right, I've moved, but not much. Almost um, like you're afraid. I'm not, I know no fear. No, one minute. I know a little bit of fear, but that's because we know what dwells in the depths of the warp. 
you know no fear because you are ignorant of such things. So well, I'm the first, mate. First so. <laughs> been around for a while. Yeah, we've done, this isn't our first rodeo. <laughs> um, all your stuff, loads of things in, in deep strike. So no need to push too far forward. Um, screening with the pox walkers right and left. And I put miasma or pestilence on this drone because I think this drone might get lit up by something. Uh, maybe, like the carapace weapons on the big knight, but you'll probably thump it into the other drone that hasn't got miasma on it. And I moved suchly, so I can now all draw, draw a line of sight on the Leviathan. This is Operation Kill the Leviathan time. And I'm going to start off shooting with the heavy blight launcher from this fetid bloke drone into the Leviathan. I can see it over the pile. He's a wide load, that guy. Mm -hmm. I can see uh, him over the pile of rocks. Jink. I, jink. I hit fours and reroll ones because the demon next to me doesn't help. This is strength six, your toughness eight. So I need fives, but I reroll all wounds because it's a plague weapon. And that's one wound at AP minus two, but Leviathans have a four up and vulnerable safe. Yeah. Which you make, okay. So the first shots bounce off its automatic shield. Let's do the other drone. Um, only three hits this time. I need fives, which I can reroll. And four more, four up and vulnerable safe, three more. And you drop two of them. You got five command points. No. No. Two D three no, no, drop dice don't count. Two D three damage. Before damage. How many did they start off with? Fourteen. That's it for this flank. We moved across to the night. I fired the stubbers in at the Leviathan, did nothing, and now I have the Avenger Gatling Cannon, which hits on threes. Eight hits, wounding on fives. I get three wounds through. They're all minus two, two damage. So four up and vulnerable saves. And you drop one, that's another two damage. It's on eight left. And now the last thing in my army that can reach out and touch it is the rapid fire battle cannon. And it's 2d6 shots. I need this to be good. Don't roll snake eyes, Winters. 10. That made me a happy bunny. Did not make me a happy panda. Well, let's see if I can hit you. Yeah. Threes. Threes to hit. Eight hits. Now for a rapid fire battle cannon, that's really good. And remember, I'm a demonic infernal household. This is a strength nine rapid fire battle cannon. So it's threes to wound. I can still fluff it on this roll. I kind of fluff it on this roll. Um, you've got that many four up and vulnerable saves to make, sir. Five four up and vulnerable saves to make. Eight wounds left to get through. Good luck. Easy, right? Yeah. You fail four of them. That's not, that's not good. Choosing not to CP. I don't have the CP to throw around and you're gonna roll at least you know, six damage. Yeah, so that's four damage because it's D3 plus one damage. And then even if I roll three ones, that's eight damage. That's the dead Leviathan, yeah. right? Even yeah. if I roll lowest. Let's see what you would have won. <laughs> <laughs> What's behind all so the three? Three plus four, five, six, seven. And then I would have spent a CP and it would have lived. It would have lived. <laughs> it's dead. It's dead. I knew it. I absolutely knew it. Does it go kablooey? On a five up. Does it? Yeah. Nice, and there's a Talonmaster right next to it. There is a Talonmaster right next to him. He does not. He does not blow up, but no, that is First Blood. And that is the end of Death Guard Turn 1. Let's see how the First Legion respond in Dark Angels Turn 1. Here we are after the Dark Angels movement phase, and with only four units on the table, and with me getting in your head. No, oh, don't listen to Winners. <laughs> don't listen to Winners. That took longer than it should have. Yeah. Uh, you've advanced with the Deathwing Knights. Deathwing? Black, Blackwing Knight, Black Knights all the way along the back line there. The reason why you've done that is because if they advance, they have a four up and vulnerable save. Deep Strike Denial back down here. That makes sense to me. That works for me. Yeah. I don't know why you've moved your Whirlwind, though. Oh, the plan... Well, you wasn't in range. Oh, it wasn't in range. Okay, so now I know why you moved your Whirlwind. He's now, he's now in range. Um... And then the Flamer Dude came forward, the yeah. Dominus, and the Talon Master zipped back a little bit, mm. so he wasn't the closest unit to everything. Yeah, I mean, I did contemplate trying to like move him forward to yeah. get some automatic hits, but I thought it's just not worth it. It's a bit quiet on this battle grid right now. Mm. It won't be for long. It won't be for long. So we're going to move on to the shooting phase. We opened up the shooting phase round here, the Talon Master firing down at the Poxwalker, killing nine of them. Um, and I pulled from the front, hoping that the Castellan launcher from the Whirlwind was now out of range, but it's still in range, and the Castellan launcher's 2d6 shots. For 12 shots. Hitting on fours, because it moved. Ooh. Yeah, only four hits, but it is strength six versus toughness three, so you're winning on twos. 
and that's why you brought it, right? Because mm -hmm. you thought I might have a lots of poxwalkers. Yeah, yeah. Thinking. It's a it's an anti infantry, anti poxwalker weapon. I like it. Um, five up, disgustingly resilient. Um, I saved two of them. So in total, you've killed 11 of those poxwalkers. There was 17 in that squad. There should only be uh, that many left. <laughs> no, six left. Now, curiously, because most things are off the table and this is a slow start, the last thing left to fire is the knight. And so you're going to put the what into what? I'm going to do the siege breaker cannons. Yes. Into the furtive bloat drone that's not in uh, miasma de pestilence. Yes. And then was it the shield breaker missile into the knight? Yeah. Okay. So three's to hit the knight then, right? It and hits. that's a hit. Strength 10, wounds on a three. And I don't get a save. <laughs> and it doesn't wound. And that would have been d6 damage. Sorry, not sorry. Right. I'm going to... You are? Uh, yeah. Uh, no. Part of me doesn't want to use CP reloads. Two-thirds chance. Ah, screw it. Sorry, Mr. AP Burn, I apologise. It yeah. wins. D6 damage. Now you roll a one. You roll a three. It does three damage. I took one when I did my demonic surge thing. It's down to 20 wounds left. At least you've injured it. It's leaking pus and fuel. And then two D3 shots of the Siege Breaker cannons coming into the drone. Two D3 each. Each, yeah, oh, yeah. For that number of shots, 10 shots hitting on threes. And at strength, ooh, that's a pretty good array of hits. And at strength seven, 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 you're winning on fours. And that's okay, that's four wounds. Mm -hmm. At minus one, D3 damage each. So fours to save. I save two, so two D3 damage on the drone, which is a four. Four, four disgustingly resilience on the drone. It takes a wound, not three wounds, it makes a save. It's down to seven left. And that is the end of Dark Angel's turn one. They've injured the drone, they've injured the knight, and they've smashed this Poxwalker unit down to six models left. They don't have to take morale. Poxwalkers are zombies, they're just mumbling brains. Now, is this battle grid about to light up with teleport flares? Do I drop all the Blight Lord Terminators in now, or do I wait to turn three? Hmm, let's find out what I do. Dark Angels. Dark Angels? Death, Death Guard. Guard. Death Guard. Death Guard turn two. The Death Guard have moved and the Terminators are off the table. Now I know this means that my Terminators won't be coming in until turn three and it's a five turn game or six turn game or seven turn game. So I know that I'm losing a couple of turns of effectiveness with my Terminators but honestly I don't really need to. It's about jumping on these objectives later in the game and also Chris really wants to come in and hurt me. He needs to have taken away the Leviathan. He needs to drop some of his Terminators in. So I'd like to counter punch his counter punch. I think that'll help me more in the long run than dropping in now and potentially shooting and charging a knight with a conflagration cannon on or shooting and charging some Ravenwing bikers back here. And my plan for the knight is if I can stay away from it for at least a couple of turns, like I said, 28 inch threat range apart from the carapace weapons. If I can stay back here for a couple of turns, darts around the edges, then it takes away some of the effectiveness of that knight for a bit. In turn four, turn five, I'm not gonna be able to do that, but I can now, so take advantage of it now. So, staying back, popping smoke on both of the rhinos, pushing the poxwalker screen forward and out, and chucking my asthma of pestilence on this fetter bloat drone. And now we're gonna shoot at the knight. It's nice. Simple. Here's the heavy blight launchers from the Fetter Bloat Drone number one, which hit on fours and reroll ones because there's a demon prince right next to them and only get one hit. Strength six, toughness eight, which wounds, and you have a five up and vulnerable save, which you fail, d3 damage. The three damage is on 25 left. <laughs> now the other drone, fours to hit, rerolling ones, and that's five out of six hits. Beautiful. Um, fives to wound. Rerolling everything for Arch Contaminator, it's a plague weapon. And um, that one, yeah, okay. So five wounds, sir, at minus two. So five more five up saves. And you make two of them. So two D3 more damage for four more damage. The enemy knight is on 21 left. Dark Angel Chris, I yeah. forgot to roll for my infernal thingy me joke. Do you mind if I do it now? I'm supposed so. to do it in the movement phase. I'm First so. time I've awesome. used this model, so. Mm -hmm. You take a mortal wound, and look, I rolled a six again, which means I can overcharge that plasma, no, sorry, the rapid fire battle cannon, which means it's a strength nine battle cannon with D3 plus one damage. So let's fire that first. Sometimes let's fire I everything. wonder why I'm such a nice person. I'm down to 19 wounds. 
So uh, I, I hurt myself to hurt you. I hurt myself to hurt myself. <laughs> <laughs> Two these. This no Oh! 11 shots with a battle cannon. This is going to sting. Three to hit. Uh, that's pretty good. That's still pretty good. Strength nine, toughness eight. Three to wound. Uh, okay, that's only five wounds. Five, five up and vulnerable saves from the rapid fire battle cannon. Daka, daka, daka. Top back to count. No. Only five, he says. I make one. One. So this is 4d3 plus four wounds. It's on 21, it loses four. And this number, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Wow. Wow. The Dominus is on seven left. That's much more effective than I thought it should be. The Stubbers have just bounced. So uh, let's do the Avenger Cannon, which hits on threes. This time my four hits. I get four hits. I need fives to wound. I get a wound. Now, interestingly enough, if you fail the save, you drop a bracket, despite being Hawk Shroud. You fail the shred save. You take two damage. It's on five wounds left. You've dropped a bracket, but that is the end of my shooting phase. Doesn't mean this thing's hitting on fours now. I think its movement is compromised. It only has five wounds left. That was brutal. That was brutal, yet cunning. As we go on to Dark Angels, turn two. Right, here we are partway into the Dark Angels movement phase because Chris, Chris has got a plan. First up, the bikers. Turbo boosting forward. They are in rapid fire range, the front rank anyway of the box walkers. They can get some shots in, plus they've got a four up and vulnerable save every time they advance. Mm -hmm. The tyrant, because of the hawk shroud thing, he counts as his second bracket, can move seven. He is in range of getting some shots in on the rhino, but he's out of range of the knight, except for the carapace weapons. Now you said you want to drop some dudes in there. We've put the dice down where you want to drop which will put you nine inches away from the knight. So in order to do that, when these guys dropped in, these Deathwing Terminators are spending two command points on a stratagem called Deathwing Assault. Mm -hmm. So in the movement phase, they appear, then they can shoot, and uh, there's 16 Storm Bottle shots coming in now, hitting on threes, and wounding on threes. And re-rolling, there's no really on the ones because the Talon Master is right there. That's why you moved him over. So many wounds came in. This is before the assault cannon. And uh, I have five up disgustingly resilient saves. And I make that me. That's the squad. There's six left. So they're wiped out. Basically, the Deathwing drop in in the movement phase, then immediately shoot using their stratagem. And the movement phase isn't over. And because the movement phase isn't over, you're able to drop in the Deathwing Knights there. It's a beautiful thing. Nine inches from the Rhino, nine inches from my Infernal Knight. You've got the Librarian dropping in as well for the reroll charge. There's this Captain guy. Uh, the Ancient. The Ancient's in there as well. So uh, that's a beautiful thing. Drop these guys in, kill the screen, and then drop the rest in. And you've kept the Lyle off the table. And five units of Deathwing Terminators to counterpunch my counterpunch, which is exactly what their I did to you. Their mission is different. It's like, yeah, what is their mission? Uh, cut the head from the snake. Oh, what? Demon Prince? Yeah, we'll get there. Oh, okay, we'll get there. So that is the end of the movement phase. We have a psychic phase now with your librarian. What is he doing? Right, he's going to do Righteous Repugnance okay. on the Deathwing Knights. Okay. Meaning a seven. Okay. And that passes. Okay. And... You're out of denial range, I can't deny it. And I'll do a version. What is Righteous Repugnance? They now, in melee, they will now reroll hits and wounds. All hits and wounds in melee? Yeah. Nasty. Okay. And we'll just do a version okay. on the knight as an insurance policy. Okay. Again, leaving a seven does not go off. Okay. Then we moved on to the shooting phase. These knights, we started with what you could shoot at, shot at the Poxwalkers, and with Disgustingly Resilient, you only kill three there. Mind you, not all of that squad were in range. Now we're coming across to the Knight Valiant. You're putting the Flamer, the Relic Flamer, into this Rhino. Mm -hmm. And then all the other guns into the Knight. Mm -hmm. I don't think you need to put the other guns into the Knight. I think this squad has got it. They've got many attacks. Mind you, it's an insurance policy, right? Yeah. So, okay, where, where are we starting? Where, where can we start? um, we'll start with the Flamer. Why not? Okay, 3d6 um, auto hits. It's an 18-inch range gun, and that's 10 auto hits. 10 hits, strength 7, toughness 7. It's a force to wound, but you can re-roll everything because it is the traitor's pyre. And I am a traitor, and, and you want to set it on the fire, like a pyre. 
Um, minus two, two damage each. So a chunk of five up saves. Uh, two, four, six, eight, ten. That's perfectly enough to take out the rhino. Unless I want to spend a command point to keep it alive, but then you'll probably just shoot at it with assault cannons and stuff. So the rhino is definitely dead. Even though it is minus one to hit. No, I'll, I'll let it go. Does it go kaboom? It does blow up, which means it's going to hurt my knight, which is probably dead anyway. So I'll let it hit the knight for D3 wounds, for three wounds on the knight. So, and then maybe I should spend that kind of rains it pours. And there's eight guys inside, and they all die on ones. And I only get one one. Right, getting the Plague Marines out like that. Now, a couple of people have asked before, is that legal? Yes, you don't have to be wholly within three. So long as a portion of that base is within three of the Rhino, I'm out. And I've tucked them in like that because Terminators, I don't want to get charged by Terminators. Then the Siege Breaker Cannons from the Knight came into my Knight. You got three wounds through, so I need three five-up saves. Four-up saves because it's minus one. One gets through. D3 more damage on my Knight. For three more damage, it's down to 13 left, and now the missile flashes out, unless you want to keep it. You don't have to fire it. You did say you were declaring it at the night, so you probably should. Yeah, I probably it. should fire it. <laughs> fire on the fort. It Look, misses. Uh, it's going to die anyway. Yeah, fine. And wherever it fired its missile, it missed. Yeah. So, um, more shots. Yeah. These so, Terminators unloading onto the Plague Marines, you said? Yep, yeah, and the Talon Master as well. Okay, where so, are we starting? Start with the Talon Master, because okay. I've got the right amount of dice-ish for that. So, <laughs> um, 12 shots with the Twin Assault Cannon. Hitting on 4s because you move. And it's Strength 6, I'm Toughness 5. So you're wounding on 3s, math. <laughs> Rerolling 1s. Because it's a Talon Master, that's what it does. Drop dice don't count. So, uh, that's okay. We were on one, sorry. All right. So, uh, many wounds. Yeah. Um, minus one. So, four up saves mm -hmm. on the plagueies. I make one. every single one. That is the only time you'll ever see that on YouTube ever. Then the heavy bolter came in, hitting on fours, wounding on fours, because I'm a plague marine. You got one wound through, four up. And I fail one. <laughs> Disgustingly resilient. There it is. I pass one. <laughs> the Talonmaster kills nothing. Okay, now we're on to the Terminators. Cool. Start with Soul Cannon. Soul Cannon. Six shots. Hitting on fours because you moved. Three hits. And wounding on threes because it's an Assault Cannon. Everything wounds. Can I continue to be jammy? No. Disgustingly resilient. Yes. Yes, I can. Only one Plague Marine dies so far. And now we have loads of strength four Stormbolt shots coming in. Indeed. After rolling the hit and rolling to wound, this many three up saves, which I make all of them. So um, only two plague marines in total have died so far, and one of them was to an explosion. And interestingly enough, that is the end of the shooting phase. You've whittled the knight down, you've blown up the rhino and spilled the contents out, and you've killed an entire unit of pox walkers. And you're taking a huge amount of ball control, to be fair. All I've got is this thin line of smelly green stuff down here. Now there's a 9 inch re-rollable charge by these dudes and I really need to kill some. Here's the overwatch shots, hitting on 6s with the stubbers, I get a hit, I'm wounding on 4, doesn't wound. Here's the Avenger Gatling Cannon, 6s, I get 3 hits, and it's front 6 so I'm wounding on 3s. 1 wound at minus 2, so 1 3 up, Storm Shield save. I kill 1, I kill 1 on the way in, number of shots by the Battle Cannon, 7 which hit on sixes and miss. Dark Angels Chris, you breathed an audible sigh of relief there. <laughs> I did. But I it's did. not over yet. No. You need to make a nine inch re-rollable charge. Good luck for the Emperor, for the Lion. And you make it in without the re-roll. So we end up here, which looks a bit weird, but when we get to the pile in, everything will be revealed. You're leaving a gap essentially for your Ancient. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's got a nine inch re-rollable charge. And you need the re-roll. And you make it with the re-roll, the Librarian's Warlord trait there, granting that re-roll. Now Dark Angels Chris, are you going to send your Librarian in? I don't need to. Why not? I mean, he's cast his Psychic Power. He's yes. now stopping a counterpunch of you deep striking behind me. Right. And he's protected by the character keyword. So he's done his job. He's, he's fine for the time being. So that's the charge phase over. Mm -hmm. I've got many command points to interrupt with. Um, who do you want to start with down here? Start with your start with your ancient, so I can then stomp I think on I'm the. I'm going to start with the Deathwing Knights. Okay, let's pile in the Deathwing Knights. 
Right, one minute before we start. I, I, the stubber does one damage. Not two. Not two. So we put one of... Because we was counting up how many attacks you actually have. And we put one of the Deathwing Knights back. Because Terminators have two wounds, quite naturally. So you've got nine there, smacking me with the what of what? The ma what? The Maces of Absolution. Maces of Absolution. So two attacks each, plus one for Shock Assault, plus one for the Psychic Power you put on them? No, for the Ancient. For the Ancient? That guy that you got into combat, he gives them an extra attack. Mm -hmm. So this is 36 attacks. Rerolling. Hitting on threes, rerolling. That was for the Psychic Power, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Barely need the reroll, but here it comes anyway. <laughs> Did you, uh, you've dropped three. Just three. Strength eight, toughness eight, winning on fours. What is the AP and damage of these things? They are minus two. Right. But they are a flat three damage. Like a thunder hammer. Like a thunder hammer, no minus ones to hit. This is slightly scary, you know. I'm about to reroll these failed wounds. I definitely know fear. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't. Right. Before you reroll the fail wounds, there's another one there. So these are all minus two, right? Yeah. Three damage each. Yeah. So these need fives. Uh, let's take the fives away. And that is three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one. There's twenty-four right there before we even re-roll. So I only had nine wounds left. I think you'd kill it. I mean, you'd kill two knights. So I don't need to roll these then? No, you don't, know. That's no. just being greedy. Right, it's dead. I can spend two CP on spiteful demise and do D6. Yeah, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Let's be spiteful. <laughs> of course it is. Two CP spent, but I need a four. Uh, and so I have to command point reroll. So this cost me three CP just to do this. Uh -huh. oh, it does blow up. Now, I want the range to be quite short because the Blade Marines are right there. Let's find out what the range is. Five. That's going to be perfect. I think it's just going to hit your death wing. It just hits the death wing, Chris. Just the death wing. Spiteful demise. Cost me three CP though. I'm down to four left. Right. D6 mortal wounds. Do you want me to take your ancient out first or some knights? I'll let you pick. You know. Oh, well, let's do the ancient. I don't know how many wounds he's got, but he drops four. Okay. And the death wing knights drop one. Oh no. One was injured, so I only killed one. And I don't think the ancient's dead either. Yeah, the Ancient's on one wound left, so for three CP I killed a Deathwing, and uh, we just measured up at the end of that combat. You're within three inches of my... you can consolidate towards my Malignant Playcaster and my Plague Marines just like that, which means I can slap them back at least. But I don't get Hateful Assault because you consolidated in. It didn't charge me. So the Malignant Playcaster, I'll activate him first. He hits on threes, and with his Corrupted Staff he'll wound on threes. And these are minus one D3 damage. So if you can fail a shield save. No, okay. Uh, then ply, pile in with the Plague Marines. Like so. And I have four normal Plague Knives, which hit on threes. And I will wound you on fours. I don't wound. <laughs> <laughs> and then the champion with a Power Fist. He needs fours. And I hit. No death to the False Empress, because it's a natural minus one to hit. But it is strength eight. I wound twice, two, three up, storm shield saves, and you drop one. D3 damage. I don't even punch one to death, it just scratches the surface, doesn't go in. And that is the end of Dark Angel's turn two, and what a turn. No morale for me to take. The Deathwing came crashing into this flank, and have smashed that Imperial Knight. Imperial Knight, that Chaos Knight, with one hit, and only lost one of their number. There's nine guys running around my flank here, and there's an objective right there. There's an objective right here. All I've got left of my army is this footprint here. What a counterpunch um, by the Dark some... Angels. But I do have 20, yeah, 20 Blight Lord Terminators. Terminators. Let's not forget that. Which I back. kept in my pocket to counterpunch your counterpunch, but you've got Belial and five Death Wings still in your pocket. I've got four command points. You've got two command points. I knew it would hot up as soon as some units came crashing in. And boy, oh boy, has this Cold War suddenly turned into a very, very hot war. And you know when Nurgle, it gets all hot in Nurgle, oh, Nurgle it land, hot and stanky. it gets really stanky. Mm -hmm. So let's go into Stanky Death Guard, turn three. Right, that was a very, very long movement phase because I had to do a lot of thinking. Let's start at the end, because that's where my brain is freshest still. I figure there's two objectives down here. This is an objective place game and there is a unit of bikes defending them. So I need to jump on these bikes. Plus, I was telling Dark Angels Chris off camera, these are Terminator killers. As soon as you overcharge them, mm. they can kill Terminator, they can drop them like it's hot. So yeah. I need these dead and there's a lot of them. 
So I've put a unit back there and a unit over here. The reason for this is because if I just dropped a unit here and he pulled these guys away after shooting, then it'll be longer than a nine inch charge. And by putting them back there, you need to draw from here and from there. I need to kill, be very, very effective in my shooting phase, which is unlikely. Um, so I should still have a nine inch charge. And then I've got a unit, I know I might be stranded there with a unit of 10 Blightlord Terminators, which cost 300 plus points just there. But I could also get on that one with this second squad there. And if I lock down these two objectives with 20 Blight Law Terminators, I've got two, mm -hmm. and then we can fight. And then all I have to do is contest you over one of these back here. Mm -hmm. And if I get two and you get one, then I win. Yeah. So that's the plan there. So what happened was these Plague Marines got out of that one, and then the Rhino moved round, and then the Plague Marines who were in combat jumped into the Rhino, because they can't shoot this turn. So if you smash the Rhino open, next turn I can get out and shoot. Mm. They can throw their firepower down, Death Guard rapid fire at 18-inch range, and the Malignant Playcaster broke round out of combat and went that way round. So whoever's left alive has to split, have to string out between trying to smash your way through the Rhino or um, uh, come down onto this objective here. But alternatively, you could just drop back onto that objective, but that's a waste of points again. So that's what happened there. And then the drones and the demon that jumped down from that thing have jumped back up here, and I need to kill the knight. The idea is kill the knight, kill the bikes, and then you're going to have terminators left and a talon master left, and then it comes down to fighting over these two objectives. If I don't kill this knight... I could be in a lot of trouble. It does mean I'm leaving these Terminators behind. It does mean I'm not really hurting the dudes that came in my back passage and really smashed me up. Mm. Um, it does mean I'm leaving the Wasteland flank and pushing back on the right flank. But uh, it's an objective points game. That makes perfect sense to me tactically. So we're going to go into the psychic phase. I'm going to start with a smite from a demon down there. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm going to start with Miasma of Pestilence. Yes, I'm going to start with Miasma of Pestilence. And I'm going to put it on the... Sp One minute. Miasma. I'm going to do Miasma. He knows Miasma is smite. Put it on the drone, the injured drone. I need a six. That passes. Would you like to deny? No. No. Okay. So now my Malignant Playcaster is going to put Putrescent Vitality on these uh, Plague Marines down here. I need a six. And that passes. And with Pestilential Fallout on a seven, any enemy units within seven inches take a mortal wound in addition to the psychic power. So would you like to block it? Because one is on one wound and will kill one. I take it you're safe keeping your block in your hand for smite. <laughs> Okay, so where you fail the smite. So those plague marines are up to toughness six, strength five now, and pestilential fallout kills. I remembered it, guys. I never remembered it. So now we're going to smite, hoping for a super smite because you've got a deny <laughs> when you, deny on your hand. I'm thinking a command point in it because this is mortal wounds on your squad, your squad of doom. Nope, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And the reason why I'm not going to do it is because I can hurt them this turn, but with their three up and saves, I can't really kill them. So if I take out two or three, it's a bonus. If I take out an extra one with a smite, it's a bonus, but it doesn't really stop the threat of these guys. So no point in re-rolling that. Instead, let's shoot the combi rhino from the, the combi bolter from the rhino <laughs> into them, hitting on threes and wounding on fours. I do a wound, two up, terminate, plate save, which you make. Should have used the combi rhino. Yes, combi rhino would have been better. Then we're going to come on to this squad here, firing in. I'm going to do the bolters first because, again, Death Guard. We rapid fire at 18 inch range. Threes to hit. And we are. We need force to wound. Um, three wounds. Three Terminator saves. I take a one. One's on a wound. And then the Blight launchers. Um, two shots each for. Uh, hit twice on brain. <laughs> wound on threes. I wound once at minus two. Oh. And that will kill one. It will do D3 damage. So I've killed two. That's okay. Killing two is okay. Now, Operation Kill the Knight is now in effect. Six shots from this heavy blight launcher down into your Dominus. Hitting on threes. 
Fours, sorry. Fours. I'm not a plague marine. I am a drone. Wounding on fives and re-rolling to wound because it's a plague weapon. Two wounds at minus two on your knight. You make a save, which is interesting because it's got seven left, but mm -hmm. this does D D3 damage. So how many's got left now? Four. Four left. Six more shots. And after this, I'll have no more guns to put in into it. And that flame is also hitting. Even if you're on one wound, that flame mm -hmm. is going to do some work. Mm -hmm. So I really need these to hit on fours. Rerolling ones. And that's good. That's five hits. Wounding on fives. Don't wound anything, but re-roll everything to wound. Which means I can't CP re-roll this if this fails, because you can't re-roll a re-roll. Two wounds. Two five-up saves. If you make one of these, and you make one, your knight will definitely live. But it takes three wounds. It's down to one <laughs> left. Ah, oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. At least the other weapons will be hitting on fives now. But that flamer... That's what it counts. That flamer's nasty. That could be game-changing. Right. Let's kill me some bikes. Start with the big guns, go down to the storm bolters, I think, the uh, combi bolters. So there is a, uh, far both parts of the uh, the combi melter. So the melter part hits on a four, misses. Multi misses. And the plasmas, there's two combi plasmas, will hit on fours. You're overcharging. No, because I'm firing both parts. <laughs> and we'll wound on threes, doesn't do anything. So then uh, let's do the non combi parts of those three weapons. So these are just bolters hitting on fours. And wounding on fives because you're a bike. I do two wounds. Two three ups. Ooh. One takes a wound. And then blight launchers. Threes to hit because there's two blight launchers in each squad. And threes to wound. Uh, two more wounds at minus two. Four up in lock for advancing. Yep, yep. Oh, So the first one will kill one and the second one does D3. Kills a second. And there's three combi bolters in this squad, which is 12 shots. Each of the squads are loaded up identically, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and I need fives to win. Uh, two wounds, two threat saves. That's it. And so I've killed two bikes so far. Now we're going to rinse and repeat with the second squad, doing it all exactly the same way. The melter, which hits on a four, and will wound on a three. Uh, four up and bun, you make it. And then the two plasmas, not overcooked, hitting on fours. Combi plasma, sorry, wounding on a that, and you take a wound, and then as before, the combi parts, the bolter parts of those variants, which hit on fours, hit on fours because I'm firing both mm -hmm. versions of the gun, and wounding on fives, a wound, you make it, okay, so just a wound so far from the second squad, blight launchers, everything hits. Okay. And reroll ones to wound because it's a plague weapon. Everything wounds. Three, four, four up and vulnerable saves. Fail. You fail them all. Mm -mm. So the first shot will kill the injured bike. Yep. The second one kills yep. another bike. The third one. The fourth one kills the third yeah. bike. Leaving three left. And then uh, combi bolters will come in. Killing them all in shooting or by punching them in the face. I'm happy either way. These are the combi bolters. And obviously getting the extra shocks because of whatever it is, that new rule, mm -hmm. which allows you to rapid fire twice with Terminators, that one. <laughs> Bolt discipline. That's the one. Well, it's not called Bolt of Discipline for Chaos. It's called something else. And I forget the name. Right. Um, three up saves. Oh. Uh, kill another bike. Good Leaving two left. Morale is going to be a thing as well, even if I fell. Oh yeah, you're a Dark Angel. Still a 9-inch charge from this squad, that's how I lined it up, but this one is probably an impossible charge now. That is the end of my <sighs> shooting phase. Your knight is still alive. That's a problem. But I need to charge over here. So we're going to do Overwatch. Let's charge. I need a 9. <sighs> command point. A one-third chance, this will put me down to three command points left. I make the charge. One wound came through on Overwatch. I made the save, and this is where we end up uh, uh, before the pile in, and this is where we end up after the pile in. And now I've got eight Blight Lord Terminators attacking two bikes, and they don't get invulnerable saves in close combat. That advancing thing and a four up invulnerable save only works if they move flat out, and it only works for shooting. And both of the flails of corruption are in assault range. Let's start with them. 
Flails have two attack each, plus one extra attack for Hateful Assault. And for every attack that you get, you get D3 attacks. So I've got six times D3 attacks. So with two models, I'm getting 12 hits and I roll poorly there, but I'm hitting on threes. No re-rolls. These are strength six. Thanks to the false emperor. Oh yeah, They're thanks, thanks. Six is an additional hit, thank you very much. So um, <laughs> with, I don't know, that's like 16 hits with two models. These are strength six, so I need threes to wound. And they're plague it's weapons. Fine. It's fine. So re-roll the ones. It's still fine. Um, and each of these is AP minus two, two damage. But the sixes with the aura rust are AP minus three. So those are six up saves. Yeah, they're, they're dead. <laughs> like that would have been four by because that would have, that was pretty brutal. <laughs> and that was just the flails. <laughs> then I consolidate, and that is the end of my turn three. Making sure I'm within an inch of the barricade there, so uh, I should be getting a cover save as well. And uh, that was a brutal counter punch, but 20 Blight Lord Terminators should be able to take out a unit of bikes. I mean, yeah. 600, 700 points there. That was good. Killing the Dominus, the Knight, huge Knight of Doom, that was not good. No morale to take round here. So you've still got Terminators, you've still got Knights, you've still got Psychic Presence, you've still got five Terminators here that are untouched. And you've still got some stuff coming in. Oh yeah, I'm cutting away your mobility bit by bit by bit. And as discussed, that is one hell of a footprint, all those Blight Lord Terminators on two objectives there. So this game suddenly got very interesting. It's incredible how tactical it gets. Yeah, it's sometimes point and click units just disappearing. It's not like, oh, take a chunk out of this, it's gone. Right, yeah. Okay, adjust. You dropped in, smashed the thing. So I've dropped in, smashed, smashed. the thing. Keeping such a large, 20, I took 40 Terminators is making this a very interesting game yeah, of 40k. It's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's like Space Hulk, but it's like <laughs> ball, right? Yeah. So let's go on to Dark Angels turn three. Here we are after the Dark Angels movement phase, and the plan involves you ignoring the Blight Lord Terminators I dropped in the Temple District all the way back here. Yes, uh, shoot what you can kill. I can't kill those Blight Lord Terminators. Okay, so they're a problem for tomorrow's, Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Exterminatus. Exterminatus. In the end, go for these two objectives up here, then maybe we'll have two each, then it comes down to Line Breaker Warlord, things like that. But if it goes to turn six or turn seven, they'll start to make their presence felt, which will make things very interesting. Mm. The knight's still alive. The librarians jumped on that objective there. The ancient's coming after my malignant playcaster, and it looks like these guys are gonna wreck open that rhino with the fly five plague marines inside, which kind of leaves these guys untouched, unless, the Talon Master stays still, the Assault Cannon in that squad stands still, you could fire up at them and hurt them. Mind you, the Knight's probably lining up with a... He is in flame range to take out one mm -hmm. of these Fetter Blow Drones. Mm -hmm. And Belial, this is nine inches back, but it'd probably fall off the table, so it's just snudged him a little bit forward. And Belial's in a nine inch charge from these Plague Marines here. And you've got some shooting back here. Basically, you've got many Terminators focusing on this core of my army back here hopefully try to clear them away and then jump on these objectives in later game turns so we switched it's interesting because i started off over here you started off over there and with all the deep strikers coming the board is completely flipped making it a very mobile game of 40k very interesting game of 40k so we're going on to the psychic phase what would you like to try to attempt with your librarian in terminator armor sir i'm going to start with smite oh okay um, well, let's roll up see if you get it, and then I'll. Uh, um, no, that does. I'll try and deny it. I deny it. I cool. deny your snunk might. I'm going to do righteous repugnance. So they can reroll a hit and wound again. And it does not go it off. It doesn't go off. I don't think they need it. I don't think they need it. <laughs> it's, a it's a nice little insurance policy. Right, that's the end of the psychic phase. Let's shoot some guns. Right, we're starting off with the whirlwind behind that building over there, firing its missiles up and over. It can fire indirectly this piece of artillery coming into the Poxwalkers for this number of shots. For seven shots, that's the perfectly statistically average for um, uh, 2d6. Hitting on threes and wounding on twos at strength six. Everything hit, though. That made you smile, didn't it? Mm, that's that was like a yeah, yeah. Um, Everything wounds. I need five up disgustingly resilient saves. I make a chunk. I only drop three Poxwalkers. Interesting. So the Poxwalkers aren't dead yet. So this Deathwing squad, the Salt Cannon stays still. We're doing a Salt Cannon and a Stormbolt into the Poxwalkers to try and kill them off. The other shot's going into the Plague Marines. Here's the Salt Cannon. Threes to hit. And that's four hits. It's twos to wound at strength six. What? I reroll ones. Because I oh yeah, you stood still. still, yeah. 
Okay, so five hits. Winning on twos, re-rolling ones because the Telemaster is in range. Re-rolling those ones. Oh, thrown dice don't count. <laughs> uh, disgustingly resilient. Oh no, okay. So um, you kill them with just the assault cannon. They okay. just explode in pussy meat sacks. And I guess the storm bolter will just slam into their corpses. Well, they were already corpses, but you know what I mean. Double tapping. Double tapping. <laughs> That's what you do in zombie land, right? Double Absolute. tap. Absolutely. Right, all the other storm bolter shots going into these plague marines. So this is 12 shots. Yeah. Oh. And these guys move. Yeah. So not really rolling with these because it's model by model basis. And then uh, fives to wound, however, we are plague marines. We are disgusting and resilient. Don't remind me. <laughs> no ones to re-roll. But that was quite a spread of wounds. That was five wounds, threes, and disgustingly resilient. Um, one oh. dies. Six left in that squad. Now the Talon Master with his twin assault cannon. He hits on threes. And no re-rolling ones because he doesn't have a grim resolve, but that's 11 hits. And we remember Putescent Vitality, so your strength 6 versus toughness 6, so you need force four. to wound. Re-rolling ones. Oh yeah, because you're a talent master. So that toughness 6, look, that's 3 wounds that would have wounded me, which don't wound me. Uh, so it might keep me alive. 4 up saves, and disgustingly Ooh. resilient. Um, I lose one, and then you've got five heavy bolter shots coming in. Six heavy bolter shots. Six heavy bolter shots coming in. Threes, everything hits again. And five. fives now, yeah. Strength five, toughness six, one wound. Four, I make the save. Then Belial fired in. He caused three wounds. Um, threes? Oh, I make all the saves anyway. <laughs> Then the squad of Terminators fired in at those Plague Marines, re-rolling everything because Belial's there. I have this many three-up saves to make. And then disgustingly resilient of five up. Um, I lose one more. Putress and Vitality on my Plague Marines, keeping them alive there. Mm. Then we had some Storm Bolters going into the Malignant Playcaster doing nothing. Storm Bolter from your Librarian actually took a wound off the drone. It's got six wounds left. And now you're going to do the Flamer into it. Are you going to put everything from the knight into this drone? I think the flamer should be enough to kill the drone. Should be, unless should you roll be. really badly. And, and then <laughs> I'll do all its other guns right. into the other drone. Okay, all right. I um, need to start clearing the way ready for that demon prince. I need to be able to target him next turn. Okay, so, well, what could possibly go wrong? Well, it's Spitfire, and as... Um, one of your opponents famously said, yeah. it always works, right? Spitfire always works. Always works. 3d6, auto hits with the Flamer of Doom for this many hits. That's okay, that's 11 hits. Strength 7, toughness 7, force to wound. Re-rolling everything because it's the Flamer of Doom. So just only 3 so far. Yeah, it should be called that in the Codex, just the Flamer of Doom. Um, oh. 6. 5 up, demon saves. I make one, that's 10 damage. It's got six wounds left, but I have disgustingly resilient. You would normally make about eight of these? I should make about nine out of 10, I reckon. Yeah, about that, yeah. No, it's dead. Um, drones blow up from fours. It doesn't blow up. Then the Siege Breaker cannons came into the second drone and managed to put four wounds on it, which are minus one. And I make all the saves on them. And uh, Chris sighs mm. despondently. <laughs> At least it wasn't disgustingly resilient rolls, because those are always heartbreaking when that happens. Well, you didn't need them. And that's a, <laughs> that's a, kind of a different kind of disappointment. That's a kind of disappointment my wife gets. <laughs> At the end of the shooting phase, the Poxwalkers are dead. One of the drones has gone down. You killed three in this squad here. We've got some charges coming up. Um, these guys can't fail. You're automatically going to be in against the Rhino and the Malignant Playcaster. Over here, though, Belial needs a 9-inch charge. We'll do Overwatch in a second. Let's see if he can make it. You've still got two command points. I do. And that's a 5 and a 1. I'm going to go for 50, it. 50-50 50 chance. I'm going to go for it. You're going for it? Good luck. And Belial oh. fails the charge. The Plague Marines managed to put a couple of wounds on Belial, but he's a boss. He saved them. Now, here we are after the charge phase. We're starting with the Ancient. Uh, attacking my malignant playcaster. He's got five attacks with shock assault because he's in range of his own aura. So threes to hit. Everything hits. Um, fives to wound though because I am tough. And that's two wounds. They are power swords. I need sixes. I fail them and disgustingly resilient. I pass both of them. He doesn't injure the plague caster. 
Now we've got all these dudes attacking the rhino. Threes to hit, threes to wound, re-rolling everything, re -roll You took down a knight last turn, the rhino just, it didn't stand a chance. <laughs> it's going to blow up on a six. It doesn't blow up. There are five dudes inside, however, which are trying to escape from the wreckage while it's getting clambered over by Deathwing knights. Let's see how many they slay as they try and get out the escape hatches. And they cut one down in the melee. And it looks like this. Plague Marine is getting back as far as they can away from these Deathwing Knights and closer to the other terminate. Is that right behind them? <laughs> Interestingly enough, when you consolidate it, you have to go towards the clear closest model. So the ones back here couldn't come forward because they were still closest to the Malignant Playcaster. So it ends up looking like this. Malignant Playcaster, three attacks, plus one for hateful assault. I hit on threes with my corrupted staff, my big wooden stick. It's strength six. I will wound you on threes. threes. It's not a plague weapon, and it is minus one. So a three up save, which you pass, because that would have been d3 damage. So these two chaps just uh, circle each other and bang each other. Your ancient's on one wound, though, right? Yeah. So all I need is one smite. Yeah. And he's dead. Yeah. And that's the end of your turn three. We have many terminators closing in on this objective down here. Oh, I lost three models. Mm. Don't roll a six. I roll a six. <laughs> One more. I'm not going to command point that because they're dead, right? There's many Terminators closing in on them. So, um, yeah, many Terminators closing on the Plague Marines around here. You still have that objective up there. We're moving into turn four. Blight Lords are out of position, but definitely controlling those objectives over there. Mm. Mm. Right. Let's try and hurt the Dark Angels now. Let's try and make them bleed in Death Guard, turn four. Here we are after the Death Guard movement phase. So my Plague Marines down here are dead. We've discussed that, but... And I can't kill all these Terminators, but what I can try and do before they die horribly screaming is kill below. I oh. feel it's a moral victory. <laughs> so that unit's moved around there. I can shoot below with them. I can't shoot below with these guys. They're closest, but I can charge him. There's a Power Fist in that squad of Plague Marines, a Power Fist in that squad of Plague Marines. Mm. So tickle him. Warm him up, make him bleed, jump on him, rip his head off. Give him the glove of love. Moral victory. Uh, Blight Lord Terminator is consolidating on these two objectives here. Again, loads of points. Not wasted. It's an objective points game. And you are on that objective. I mean to take it from you. It is your warlord. I mean mm. to assault him, kill him. And that Imperial Knight is on one wound left. So um, let's do all of this in order. Uh, kill the knight, one wound, how hard can it be? Start off in the psychic phase, smite on him. That passes. You can try and deny that if you'd like to. No. So um, it does a mortal wound in addition. Um, so I don't know what happens with Pestilental Fallout, because that would be D3 mortal wounds on him, and then a mortal wound on the closest unit, which technically at the time of the power would have been the same unit. Does it do a mortal wound to them? I would assume so, because the smite kills him. Okay, we'll put, I don't know. Comment below. Does, I, I'm happy to say that the smite doesn't, the pestilential fallout ability doesn't roll over into them. Is it a mortal but mor wound? But it is a mortal wound. Does it, does mortal, do mortal wounds spill across units? I'm not sure. I don't think they do. Yeah, but the smite killed him and then, I don't know. Let's just say no. No. Let's say no. Okay. <laughs> um, and then I want to put uh, Miasma of Pestilence on my demon because he could be in trouble. I suspect that you're going to come around and kill my warlord after my warlord tries to kill your warlord. So That might be a thing that happens. Miasma of Pestilence on him makes him minus one to hit on a six. That passes. Would you like to try and deny that? No. No. And then he will smite your your warlord. Five, would you like to try to deny that? It doesn't go off. What? Because you've already done a smite. Oh, yeah. Six. It's a five, then a six, then a... Yeah, okay. So, he hasn't denied anything yet. Nope, doesn't mean <laughs> He's quite self-serving. Okay. <laughs> right, let's shoot some guns. Let's put six heavy blight launchers into that tyrant on one wound. Not tyrant, Dominus. Valiant on one wound left. Fours. Good here. I get five hits. Oh dear. How did that happen? Oh dear. Five to who? Rerolling to wound with Arch, Contaminator, Warlord, Trig. Okay, so two wounds, two five up invulnerable saves, ion shields flashing to keep your knight alive. He's Probably dead. Both, yeah. He's a dead knight. Does it go kaboom? You roll 2d6, and if either of these is a 6, it explodes. There's nothing within 6 inches of it. No, but it's a 2d6 explosion. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> right, okay. 
neither of them is a six. The night just crumples. Maybe slimy maggots finally melt their way through its steel hide. And the pilot inside just screams, saying, Oh no, I shouldn't have prayed to the Emperor. I should have prayed to the correct he's God. He's just Nurgle. tired. He's gone home for his sleep. That's all it is. So we're saying he ejected out and he's ran for it. He's fine. Yeah. That's shooting round here. He will fire a bolt pistol in, which doesn't hit. Um, okay, let's kill Belial. <laughs> <laughs> right, my um, champion round here is going to um, uh, bolt gun him twice, which wounds on fours. I wound him once, two up save. That's it. And then we've got two blight launchers going into Belial, master of the death wing. Three hits at strength six. Two wounds hit the master of the death wing at minus two. But I'm assuming he has a four up and vulnerable save. It does, indeed. And he fails them both. And this is two D3 damage. I'm going to command point one of those, I think. And he passes and that's your last command point. It is. It is. D3. Bilal just takes a wound. Bilal's got five left. As discussed, this squad can't fire at him because he's a character, so I fired the bolters up at the Terminators and didn't wound them. Terminators in cover, that's going to happen. But the Blight Launchers might wound these Terminators on three... No, only with one hit, it won't. And reroll ones to wound. Um, I do wound, it's minus two but minus one because you're in terrain. So one, three up. Yeah, okay. So that's it from over here. The Plague Marines firing in everywhere they can and injure Belial. That is all they manage to do. Now over here, let's fire these Terminators in at your Terminators, my Blightlord Terminators, by the statue in at your Terminators in cover. Let's start off with the Blight Launchers again. Threes to hit and threes to wound. Rerolling ones because it's a plague weapon. Two wounds at minus one because of the terrain. You fail one of them, D3 damage. And I kill one. Plasma. One's in rapid fire range, combi plasma. One isn't. I'm not going to overcook it. Oh, really? That would be suicide. They've been cleaning their guns since last time, though. Okay, we're going to overcook it. <laughs> Let's do the one in rapid fire, overcooking it, and the one not in rapid fire. So, two hits. That's strength eight. Thanks for baiting me. <laughs> two wounds. <laughs> minus three, two damage, which is minus two because of the terrain. Two four ups. Yeah. I kill one. One gets melted to plasma fire. Then we're going to do all the rest of the shots. Then all the bolter weaponry fired up. Terminators in cover. Got a couple of wounds in, but they made their save. And that's the end of my shooting phase. That's it. We're going to do some charging. Both of these squads are going to try and charge Belial, starting with this squad here. And they make their charge. He got a wound on Overwatch. Throw up save. Uh, I make it. Phew. And the second squad, um, this is actually a 9-inch charge. And they fail. From that fight, we come over to the statue. Now, I wanted to charge my Blight Lord Terminators into this squad of Terminators, but um, I'm just a bit too far away. Well, I could make a... It's, it's 11 and a bit, but I don't want to get overwatched, so I'm not going to charge. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm on an objective over there. Meanwhile, over here, my Demon Prince is going to jump on your Librarian, and he's fine, and then the drone will follow him up. And uh, as long as I'm five inches away, that's fine. Yeah, he said... No damage done on Overwatch. Demon Prince with a pair of Malefic Talons, seven attacks, plus one for Hateful Assault, eight attacks. I hit on twos with these Talons, and I reroll ones. So eight hits, and a Death to the False Emperor. I remembered, nine hits, nine out of eight. And uh, <laughs> I'm strength seven, threes. I'm winning on threes. And then minus two, two damage, and that is seven wounds. So seven, four up saves on your librarian. Five ups. Minus two. Oh, four up saves. Yeah. Uh, that's six wounds. That's Slay the Warlord. Then I activated the drone, that charge, so you could activate him and move him closer to the closest enemy units, mainly because my character there isn't exposed from the firepower that might come back. And as you have no command points to interrupt, we come back here to Belial. So the three normal Plague Marines fighting him have six attacks with Hateful Assault, hitting on threes. Hitting on fours. Why? Parrying Blade. Minus with... one to hit rolls against Belial. Okay, so don't get death for the False Emperor? So it's minus one to all your hit rolls. Okay. Uh, plague Weapon. I get two wounds through though. Two two up saves. Uh, takes wound. 
Takes a wound. He's down to four left. So this power fist is going to hit on fives. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have come this way, should I? And I hit once. I will wound him on a two. I don't wound him. So Blau's on four wounds left. He's very angry. And he swings the Sword of Silence. And he hits on twos with five attacks with Shock Assault. And the Sword of Silence wounds on twos. It yep. just does. <laughs> so he only gets three wounds through. Interestingly, AP minus three. Sixes. I fail all of them. How much damage? Two damage. Two damage each. So the first guy is dead. Second guy, dead. Third guy is dead, which interestingly enough leaves one guy left alive with a power fist who is my champion who will run away on a six. And he doesn't run away. He stands there fighting him down saying, no, we do not bend. No, that's not us. <laughs> we, we do not break. We will take you with us, Blyle of the Death. Death, God, Dark Angels. I'm getting excited. I'm getting <laughs> so excited. lights and death. Yes, that was a, quite a good counterpunch by the Death Guard there. Too many knights and deaths calling this up. So currently, I'm on all four objectives. Mm. All four objectives, so the Dark Angels need to push back hard now in turn four. Here we are after the Dark Angels movement phase. Belial stays in his happy place, slaughtering heretics, and this unit of Terminators prepared to jump down on these three Plague Marines holding this objective here. I have, um, you need to take two objectives off me, and I slaughtered the enemy Warlord, the Dark Angel Warlord. Now, of course, Dark Angels Chris is going after my Warlord. My no, retribution here. will be swift. <laughs> retribution will be swift, lovely. So no psychic phase now, because... Um, the psychic phase, he was your warlord, and uh, I don't know if you remember, but... Uh, he, um, he had some kind of... I killed him. <clears throat> yeah. I killed... He teleported back Accident. to the battle barge, he's in the apothecarium, he'll be fine. He dies every single fight. <laughs> so yeah, no psychic phase, warlord dead. Did I mention that? Um, I may have mentioned... Did you tell him about the warlord yet? I, uh, in case anyone missed last turn... He I... was here, he was blue. Yes. He's gone missing. He's not there now. No. Right. Shall so I put him back on? No, no, oh, no, okay. let's go on to the shooting phase. Talonmaster firing everything into my Demon Prince. Uh, 12 shots with his Sock Cannon. Take a force. At the strength of 6, you're winning on 4s, because I'm a Demon Bitch. Demon Prince. <laughs> demon Prince. Honest. Uh, Sorry, kids. Minus 1, yep. so 3s. Uh, demon Prince. Yep. Uh, I take 2. I got disgustingly resilient. I make one of them. He's got seven wounds left. Supplurating plate, which means I have a tip. Right, I'm going to call this now, right? right. Disgustingly resilient blocks a third of damage winters. Yes. Third, not half. A third. <laughs> right. Okay, and then um, heavy Six bolts. shots with a heavy bolt. Yeah. Fours. That's good. Then you got four hits. Well done. Five's to wound. Don't patronise me. You got a wound. Well done. <laughs> Thanks. Three up save. I fail the save, disgustingly resilient. It won't pass, honestly. No one can pass this we number of disgusting. I do. Yeah, Sorry, I passed it. Right, after all those mass reactive rounds pound into my demon prince and fail to kill him, we came over here to this unit of death wings, which had re rolled a hit, so they're still in Belial range of these plague marines. Many wounds came through. Um, I need threes. I fail two. Disgustingly resilient. Will fail, obviously. See, it failed. I lose two of these, leaving the champion left staring down the Terminators. Then the whirlwind hugging the ruins was ordered to switch targets and decided to start taking on the Blight Lord Terminators, trying to start whittling them down. Six wounds came through, I have six to up saves. And I fail one disgustingly resilient. And I fail that, so one of the Blight Lord Terminators takes a wound, they're injured. And then one of them died when this unit of three uh, Deathwing Terminators fired back over their shoulder, killing one of them. So uh, taking uh, the first bite out of this giant apple over here and that is the end of the shooting phase. We have some charges coming on. We have these terminators trying to get into my champion down here and they make that charge. That's just under seven inches. Then the terminators ended up here. Now a multi-charge was declared by the unit of Deathwing Knights here which is very interesting. I fired a ton of overwatch and uh, threw up storm shield saves holding firm. Essentially, you're declaring the Malignant Playcaster, your auto in there, mm, mm. but it's a six to the drone and a nine to the demon prince. So uh, any number is pretty good. You will engage something. Oh, that's a ten. I think my warlord could be in trouble. And that was very interesting. You ended up like this. You've left the uh, sergeant equivalent, the master, with my Malignant Playcaster. These two chaps won't be able to fight. 
those four are. And then the Talon Master went in, and then these Deathwing went in. Essentially, many units are surrounding my Warlord and um, the Malignant Playcaster over here. I have three command points. I could pay to interrupt. Where would you like to start? I'm going to start with three Deathwing Knights, uh, four Deathwing Knights on your Warlord. Okay. So with Shock Assault, three attacks each. So uh, 12 attacks. Hitting on threes. Yes. And that's 11 hits. Strength 8, Toughness, Demon. Rerolling on threes. That's the one. Rerolling ones. Okay. Why do they reroll ones? Tan Master. Oh, yeah. No, that's Cock Okay. Okay. And this is AP minus two. many? Two. Yep. So I have my two up suppurating plate becomes a four up. Okay, thank you. So fours to save. And. Three damage each. Three damage each. Okay, before we do my damage, on the suppurating plate, every save on a four up, acid spills out and hurts you. Yeah? Mm -hmm. it's, I have acid for blood. Mm -hmm. And three mortal wounds come back in on the unit of Deathwing Knights. And then this is three damage each. So yep. I need 12 saves. And my demon's got seven left. There's four more over here. So don't worry, folks at home. You will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is enough. Is this enough? This might be yeah, enough. We'll count them as fives. Um, mm. You're dead. That's yeah. Perfectly enough to kill him. Now, I could command point reroll, but yeah, there's one, one many. More to roll. Have I? I said 11. Oh. Of course. So, I could command point <laughs> reroll, <laughs> but there's more attacks coming into my demon prince, so I'll give you Slay the Warlord. After the demon prince dies, this unit also attacking my malignant playcaster, the master's four attack for shock assault, and he hits three times. His strength? Six. Okay, winning on three is on toughness five. And minus three. Minus three. Sixes. I make one. Two damage. Disgustingly resilient. My malignant playcaster finally takes a wound. He's got three left. And now we've got the other attacks hitting the drone. Right, the Talon Master is now going to strike the drone. You've, he's the one with the relic, the Heavenfall Blade. Yeah. So what's he got? So he has four attacks naturally. Yes. Plus one for Shock Assault. Yes. Plus one for the Heavenfall Blade. Nice. Okay, so uh, he hits on threes. Most left handers hit on two. So he hits on threes. Does he? Strength seven, tough as seven. Yep, winning on fours. They all wound. What does the Heaven Flail for Blade do? It is minus three, D3 damage each. Is it? Yes. Five off and runs. No, D3 each. This could be painful. It's not as painful as it could be. Five That's wounds. five wounds, but three Terminators are about to punch it as well. After I make disgustingly resilient rolls and save two of them. So it's got seven wounds left. These three Terminators need to kill seven wounds and you've got nine attacks coming in. Right, a ten for the Sergeant. Oh, ten for the Sergeant. Because the Deathwing Sergeants can all have fists, right? Yep. Okay. You can equip them how you like. Yep. So Fours, they are power fours. fists. Ooh, that's fruity. That's good. That's Threes, good. Threes, re-rolling ones. Yes. Re-roll ones because the Talon Master. Yep. Okay. Okay. Right, okay. So I've got seven wounds. Seven wounds left. Five up and buns. Three go through. Three d three damage. Four, mm. three, six. Six damage. Not enough to kill it. In total, I took six wounds. Then we came down to this corner where the remaining plague marines were. There's no melee remaining play marines anymore. Blar made short work of that champion. They absolutely slaughtered uh, these guys here. I know it should go you go, I go, but we're just clearing up. We mm. knew they would die. Now we're back over here to my drone, which has got two attacks plus one for hateful assault. And I'm gonna hit your um I'm gonna hit your terminators. I hit on fours though. Mm. And I'm winning on threes. And it's minus two, and it's d3 damage. And you fail one, and I kill a terminator. And then my malignant playcaster, which just got charged, is going to have four attacks on your Deathwing Knights. And he hits all times, and he wounds on threes. They're minus one, though. Four wounds at minus one. Each doing D3 damage. But you make the saves. The Deathwing doing what Deathwing do. And at the end of turn four, in this back and forth game, it's gone back and forth one more mm -hmm. time. The Dark Angels have scored 
slay the warlord and they're on one objective and they're on two objectives and they're line breaking and i've got two objectives i've got warlord and first blood so currently it's a draw currently as we head to turn five and here we are at the very end of the death guard turn quick turn that one i've got one two objectives and slay the warlord and first blood and I've got quite a few models now line breaking, so I'm on nine points. And then the drone fell back out of combat, and with the help of these Blight Lord Terminators down here, killed the Terminators that were engaged in close combat with it, because the drone can fall back and shoot. It's got the fly keyword. And then my malignant playcaster smited and hurt some of the Deathwing Knights there. And that was the end of the turn. So currently I'm on nine points. You're on three, six points, plus line breaker, plus slay the warlord. You're on eight points. And to win, you have to kill me off one of these objectives. So it is a tough ask for the Dark Angels, but not impossible, particularly if it goes to six or seven. So let's find out what they do in turn five. Right, the Dark Angels have a plan, and it's quite simple. Essentially, they just have to kill this squad and hope it goes to enough turns so they can kill the squad. So back in this corner, Belial was moved up onto this objective here. He can hold it. He's a character. I'm not going to be able to shoot him. And the Terminators are coming forward. It's too far to charge this turn, but they can put Stormbolt rounds in at those Blight Lord Terminators and potentially charge in turn six and turn seven. The Talon Master's moving up as well to stitch death down into them. And remember, morale is a thing. Meanwhile, over here, the Deathwing Knights are ignoring the Malignant Paycaster on three wounds left and are consolidating on that objective. Yes, I can smite them. Yes, I can start hurting them. But potentially, I don't have enough damage to kill them by the time the game ends in turn seven. So, we're going for a Hail Mary here mm. for the Imperium, trying to blow off these Blight Lords. Sorry, where did that? Trying to blow away, trying to destroy. The heretic Astartes <laughs> rampaging in the city. Right, where are we starting, Chris? Right, let's start off with the Talonmaster. Okay. The star of the show. Good luck, the, by the, the way. Main event. Thanks. Darkly. Genuinely, First Legion. Genuinely going to need it. Right. <laughs> um, head on fours. Yes. That's not That's... a good start. Yeah. Uh, wounding on threes. Wounding on threes. Top is five. Rerolling ones because of himself. Okay. Converts two more. So how much you get? Uh, seven. Seven. Yes. Seven. Minus one bit, sir. Seven. So two sailors. Threes. Two wounds. Disgustingly resilient. Don't you dare. You kill one. Yes. One <laughs> Let's take from the front because you're going to come in. Is that my? You know, he's a normal guy. He's gone. Heavy balls. Yes. yes. Six heavy ball shots. Fours. Four hits. And fours. Uh, fours again. One wound. Oh, read on one. One wound. One, three up. Fine. Next, the Stormbolt has unloaded, re-rolling to hit because they're within six inches of Belial. These are the wounds. I think you just drop one hit. Mm -hmm. And you need fives. Oh, that's pretty good. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wounds. Eight. Two up saves. Terminators. Come on. Two fail. Disgustingly resilient. Don't do it. One takes a wound. Belial has a Stormbolt, so he's firing in. And he hits with everything because he hits on two, suffice to wound. And he doesn't wound. And I think that's the end of your shooting phase. It is. So Are you going to charge anywhere? I'm going to charge the Fettered Bone Drone with the Deathwing Knights. Really? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to charge the Blight Lords with my Italian Master. Okay, let's, let's shoot your Knights. I miss your Knights. How far did you go? That's a six. Um, that might be a fail. I think it is a fail. How that far, extra inch means everything. How far is, how far is this? Tell this them master into the knights. This is a ten, well, nine inch charge. Okay, I'll do have watch in a second. Let's see if we can get in there. Nope. Mm, that's a fail as well. Missed with all the good shots from the Blight Lord Terminators and uh, hit with a few Storm Bolters, which you um, parried with your three up save. And that is the end of turn five. That is the end of turn five. Long bomb charge failing there, but we've still got turn six or turn seven unless the game ends. And currently you're on two, I'm on two, plus I've got all the secondaries and you've two of the secondaries. Yeah, yeah, so it's close. The player who went first rolls the dice and on a one-two, this will be a death guard victory. 
it isn't. We go on to turn six. Here we are after the Death Guard movement and psychic phase, even though I'm winning, I'm not backing down from this fight. The Malignant Playcaster moved forward, cast Miasma of Pestilence on himself and killed one of the Deathwing Knights with Mind Bullets. Meanwhile, over here, we're going to try and kill the Talon Master. The drone will unload into him and I hit on fours. And that's three hits and it's strength six. I don't know what your toughness is. Two wounds at minus two. Does he have an invan this guy? Nope. Okay. Five ups. You make one of them. D3 for one damage. Down to five. Blight launches from this squad of Terminators. Three hits. No, oh, reroll ones. It's a plague weapon. One wound, minus two. That was it. Another three damage. Do they only start with six? Yep. Really? Yep. Okay. There's a melter in front. Which hits and at strength eight, it doesn't wound. Whew. I'm going to overcook the plasma. There's one here, and I am in rapid fire range, being a death guard, and he dies but hits, which will wound on a three. It wounds, you need a six. Yep. Nope, and I'm going to overcook the other plasma. Yeah, he had two wounds. Did he? Yep. Okay, he's dead. He is dead. Now, I was thinking about charging the Talon Master if he didn't die. I could charge these guys and leave a tail all the way back and still score that objective there. But um, I, I don't need to. Why? That's the end of my turn. Oh, because you're a coward. That's, That's the end of my turn. Yeah. Being tactically Scared perfect. Of the death wings, we have our objective, which is the Scared city, of the, death the ruins. Wings. You must try and take it from us, sir. In Dark Angels, turn six. Right, here we are after the Dark Angels movement and shooting phase, because the shooting phase was very quick. <laughs> <laughs> Not all left to shoot. These guys are growling at the malignant playcaster over here, these Deathwing Knights. Now, I don't know if you want to charge them, because if you fail to kill him for some miracle, and fail to consolidate back onto that objective, they are gonna have to you sit will tight. auto lose the game. What you need to do is kill the Blight Lord Terminator, so the Whirlwind Missile Launcher lashed in and smashed onto them. I haven't even bothered firing at your mobile missile launcher. I don't, don't need to. And it didn't do any damage. And then you unloaded Belial and the Squad of Deathwing into them, everything. The Heavy Flamer was in range. You killed one. Mm -hmm. It was good. You've killed one. But now you need to make a charge. And basically, it is a four-inch charge. And they are in. Right, let's do some Overwatch. <laughs> Light launches. I hit you once. And I wound you once at minus two. You make the save. save. Okay. Let's overcook the plasma. No. Yeah. No, cool. because you've got five and I've got six. If you kill one and for some reason I don't outnumber you, we could cancel each other out and no one score that objective. But you're always going to cook your plasma. Okay, I'll overcook it. I don't hit. There is a melter. Which misses. Right, let's do all the bolt guns. Right, the bolt guns didn't do any damage. Your terminators. Interestingly enough, with that 10-inch charge and because I took that guy away... This is where you end up. You're contesting that objective. Now you just need to kill some Blight Lord Terminators. It's easy. <laughs> and so survive how some many, Blight Lord Terminators. Have they, has everyone got fists? Yeah. So that's 15 attacks plus one for the sergeant. That's 16 attacks hitting on fours. This should do it. <laughs> you and I and the rest of the world watching both know. You should kill a couple. about... Disgustingly resilient. Yeah, but you should kill a couple and then I'll have less attacks back on you and then you could potentially outnumber me on that objective. Then you'll win. This is to win the game, Chris. No pressure now. Right. Last time, those guys with flails fought. Yes. <laughs> they had more attacks than I'm holding Well, then hands. morale is also a thing as morale well. You've killed one thing. so far. So forced to hit with your fists. That's pretty good spread of hits to me. Right, that was nine hits. Strength eight, toughness. Normally it would be twos. But I'm a, yeah, it's threes. I'm top as five because I'm a death guard. So threes to wound. And that's a good spread of wounds. Seven wounds. Seven wounds. Is it seven? It's like seven eight. Wounds. That's eight. Oh, it's eight wounds. Yeah, do eight, eight wounds. wounds. Eight we'll do wounds. Next week, right? Now, again, normally it would be a five up terminator save, but I'm Blight Lord. I have four up armor. Eight wounds, four up saves. This is for the win. Oh, that was a few, huh? I only failed two. 2d3 damage? Two, uh, one at a time. One, disgustingly resilient, which I fail. And then two, and then the other one did two damage. Oh no, that's okay. the other one, yeah. Yeah. 
which I failed. You kill one. Okay. You've killed two, which isn't enough for morale. Kill one in combat, one with shooting, two dead. So morale won't be a thing. And I have piled in. And I get an extra attack because of shock assault. And the two flails are still alive. They're three attacks each. Six attacks. So it's 63 attacks just from the flails for this number of attacks. And I'm spending a command point on veterans of the long war. 11 attacks hitting on threes. And there's a couple of death to the false emperors. So I'll reroll them. Seven hits. Now with the veterans, I'm winning on twos. And with veterans, fives and sixes are AP minus three. These are AP minus two. So three are AP minus three five ups and three four ups. What are these? Uh, what do you want me to take? These are the five ups. Let's do the five ups. So Ooh, two of them. Only one dies and then three four ups. Two only die. two die. Only two die. Three left. Now the bubotic axes. And that's two death to the false emperors. And I'm strength five, so I would win you on three, but with veterans, I'm winning you on twos. Uh, no aura of rust, so that's six wounds, and they're all um, AP minus two. Now I make one of them. One of them, so that's five damage. One death wing knight is left alive. And then we have a leadership test on your death wing. They are fearless. They're fearless. Death wings are fearless. Okay, let's consolidate. A brave attempt, brothers. A brave attempt of fighting hand to hand below this statue here, but currently I still outnumber you on that objective there. Fearless, okay, I love it. But that is the end of turn six, and the player who went second rolls the dice. And we go on to turn seven. Then at the end of turn seven for the Death Guard, just two casualties. Um, magic bullets killed one of the Deathwing Knights holding that objective there, and the Fetter Bloat drone jo joined in. And then over here, I slaughtered the last guy holding the statue, or holding out against the statue there. That's the end of Death Guard turn seven. As discussed, I've got nine points. The Death uh, Dark Angels have eight points. And at this point, there is no way back for the Dark Angels, unless... Belial somehow makes a long bomb charge onto them and kills enough so that morale is a thing. If that would happen, then I'd control that one and that one. Mind you, then you won't be line breaking. If you do that, you won't be line breaking. But you won't hold the objective, so you get on three points. Three plus first blood, first line breaker, plus I lay the warlord will be six. So and I'll you'll have, have one three. Out of six. Oh, yeah. Plus Let's first take. blood, plus... So he needs to make a charge, and we got down and measured this, is 12. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Belial needs to make... So if we get to Dark Angel's turn 7, it's a 12, because he can move 5, then he can charge. It's a, it's basically, um, you're just under 12 inches away, so it's an 11-inch charge. Yeah, yeah. If he makes this, we'll go into turn 7. Yeah. If we don't, we'll say this is the way the world ends. Agreed. So 11 inches for Belial to save the day for the Dark Angels. Before I roll this, the only it's condition. about the what? motion in the ocean, not the length of your charge. All okay, right. alright then. So. I like it. That's a, a ten. 10. Belial falls one oh. inch short and it is a victory for the Death Guard and this is the way the world ends. Uh... Yes, that was one of the most tactical games that I've played in a very long time. That was... See, when you came in like a hammer with all your knights over here and just destroyed my, uh, destroyed my Imperial Knight and start threatening my back castle, um, I had these in the Deep Strike Teleportarium yeah. to counterpunch your counterpunch. Yeah, but um, I just... I, I thought I could just stay away from them. That was my tactic the whole game. Yeah. I, I knew that as soon as I lost one of my key units, like the Leviathan or something like that, I just, I was not going to be able to kill a whole squad of Black Lord Terminators. We were on exactly the same page, because when you dropped in here, I thought, yeah. right, what I need to do is stay away from them. Like, yeah. I just tried to stay away from your tyrant, not your tyrant. Valiant. Valiant for a couple of turns, <laughs> I've been leading, reading. See, I'm an Imperial player at heart, but I was reading the Chaos Knight book before I started thinking, oh, look at all these lovely stratagems that I didn't use. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, not a um, single one. Not a single one, no. Yeah. I've still got two command points over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I did exactly the same thing. I thought, right, because I could... I, I, yeah, mobility. If I That's stay away from you. Yeah. It's interesting. It was very interesting because 
I counter deployed and then you counter deployed and then you put in the teleporter so I put in the teleporter then you came in so I came in over there mm. I think what your list what I think taking out those bikes was quite critical it was that Be, was the cuz then you lost your speed that was my end game grab objective unit. yeah and and you were, wrong. you were telling me off camera you should have kept them back yeah you took them as a counter punch unit and then I ran them forward to kill three cops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mistakes and were made. If they'd have stayed back here and I'd have dropped anywhere in here, then I'd have been charging through craters and it would have been minus two to charge. I probably wouldn't have been able to charge them. And then they would have dashed out and absolutely murdered many of these Blight Lord Terminators With and it could have been a different down. game. I could have gotten up to damage three. Yeah. Yeah. Mind you, if there was a different type of deployment, if we played Hammer and Anvil or something, it could have been a different game. Then they would have been a first turn charge. See, normally 40k is, you've got a castle and something smashes. That's yeah. what it normally is in 8th edition. Yeah, Not yeah. all pick the time, flank, but yeah, you pick a flank, you focus on that thing, you do your stuff. and then. But in this game, we, yeah. swap, sides. we swap sides. And then mobility became a very big issue, and uh, it was very interesting. We just have big, big clubs swinging at each other. You know, you've got these this huge wrecking ball of a unit that will steamroll anything, yeah. but it only moves four inches. Yeah. You know, okay, yes, yeah, and there's some plasma in there and stuff, but the firepower is fairly incidental. These 20 Terminators plus my Knight was about 1,500 points. Yeah, about the same. <laughs> <laughs> Just these two units is about 1,000, I think. Where's my list? Yes, 931 points for 20 Blight Lord Terminators. <laughs> And they felt like that they were that pricey. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I would bring them in a regular 2,000 point game. 20 of them. They get work done. They, they, they're scary. They See, the other thing about... But their squad here, you know, yeah. 500 points, they, they held an objective. Yes. And, and won me the game. Yeah, but... See, that's what you've got to do sometimes. It's so yeah. easy to go, I want to kill this, I want to kill that, yeah. I want to kill that, and I not play the objective. Game. Classic case of extension, I think. Well, what we can say is, you came here to kill the Imperial Knight and kill the demon. There is no demon presence on this table. Belial has done his job. You purged the Pox Walkers, you took out my demon prince, Belial has done his job. Um, teleports back to the Battle Barge and say, our work here is done. You have left the Blight Lord Terminators, victors, in an empty, broken city. And there's a whirlwind driver who has actually no idea what's going on. He can he gets a Vox and he'll yeah. turn around and... and, and and race off into the city somewhere. These Blight Lord Terminators can't catch him. Yeah, so right. even though it was a victory for the Death Guard, maybe that's what the Dark Angels intended all along. To cut the head from the snake, you've certainly done it. Asriel is elsewhere. Yeah. This is not the full strike force. The third company are engaged on other grids. But anyway, I thought that was very. I thought our lists were different. Mm. I thought the way we deployed and played that game was different. I thought that was a very interesting game of 40k. One of the most tactical games of 40k. You got me thinking mm. that I've played in some time. The thing is, it's, it's about not taking troops. If you don't take a battalion, I know you did today, but yeah. I didn't take a battalion, and it changes the way you play. Yeah. You know, because for me, well, as a space wing player, I'll have five intercessors on an objective, and they'll sit there. Yeah. And you know, and you do that five times, it's two, three hundred points. But if you plow that into a land raider or one of those units you don't see all the time, and, and play your army differently, you get different games. It was a different game. Well, I very much enjoyed myself. Thank you very much for coming down. This battle mat is brought to you by Hot Dice Miniatures. And if you'd like some more battle reports from Winter's SEO, then check out Deployment Zone. Dot .tv, there is a narrative campaign with me and you in it called yeah. Pride Before Dawn, where you brought a lot of Terminators and took on... We played 40k inside a space hulk. And it was good, right? And it worked. Yeah, yeah, people <laughs> liked it. It worked really well. It yeah, was yeah. That was tactical as crap, that was. That was cool. <laughs> All our games tend to be. Yeah. yeah. That was a great game. So, um, thank you very much, everyone, for watching this. Hope you enjoyed that battle report. Happy Wargaming.